So today I'm going to show you a few of our fruits here that are um, in the cloud forest and they are super nutritious. I have a lot of hope for these foods that they could be um, very, very high protein and high nutrient foods that we could bring to more of the world in uh, the coming years. And the first one I want to show you guys is the peach palm. This is in Ecuador. This is called Chantaduro. In Colombia, it's called something else. In Peru, it's called something else. There's a million names for it. But this is the, the fruit of a very tall, skinny palm tree, very thorny. And this fruit is incredibly nutritious. This is what it looked like, what it looks like when it's raw, and this is what it looks like when it's cooked. Not only is it incredibly nutritious, but the tree is perennial, meaning it just grows and grows for it will har you can harvest peach palm fruits, chantadoro, for more than 50 years. Um, it just keeps producing and producing. And every bunch, this is, I already cooked a whole bunch of these. This is only like about half the bunch. Every bunch of chantadoro is about like 10, 12 pounds. So it, it just uh, harvests amazing amounts of food. It doesn't need a lot of fertilizer. It's very unpicky in the way that it grows. Back in the days in the rainforest, when people were cultivating trees in the rainforest, the Yumbo Indians here in Ecuador and other rainforest cultures, this was so valuable, it was used as money. And the reason why Chantaduro is so valuable or peach palm is so valuable is because as a food, it is loaded in protein, fat, carbohydrate, Obviously, tons of beta carotene. You can tell by the, the beautiful orange color of it how much beta carotene is in here. Um, and it's got a really good, complete omega profile of fats. So sort of like an avocado, it's one of those tree fruits that is also incredibly nutrient dense. It has absolutely, it has hardly any sugar. It's actually much starchier in texture and almost, almost meaty. I swear to God, when I eat a bunch of these, I feel like I just ate a hamburger. Um, so all you have to do is boil the fruits and then you know you can open them, top it with salt. I like to put a little homemade hot sauce on mine, really good to eat with hot sauce. Um, so anyway, so that's chantadoro or peach palm. Another food that we have here that is um, super, super nutrient rich that not a lot of people know about is the sacha inchi. The sacha inchi is a vine and it grows these beautiful star-shaped pods. And then in each lobe of the pod, there is a nut, okay? So inside each one of these, there is a nut. And here are the nuts that my partner Juan very uh, assiduously shelled. And now what we're going to do is we're gonna lightly roast these. You have to roast them because they have a little bit of an acid. So you have to make sure that you wanna roast that out. And we're gonna roast these and you can just eat them as is. You can make trail mix with them. I like to grind them into a flour. It's an incredibly protein rich, nutrient rich flour. And one of the greatest things about Sacha Inchi is that it's got a complete omega profile. It's not missing any of your omegas. It's got three, sixes and nines. And it's very, very high in nine, which is unusual for a nut. The other great, really great thing about it is because it grows on a vine and it doesn't grow on a tree, it, only, it takes less than a year to start producing. So with things like Brazil nuts, cashews, uh, pecans, they take years and years to produce, 12, 15 years to start to produce. These produce in less than a year and they are so nutritious and so nutrient dense and delicious and good for you and really versatile too. The other food that I wanna show you guys, which is getting a little bit more popularity now in uh, sort of the developed world in the global north, this is cacao. This is whole bean cacao that has been uh, fermented and dried and shelled. And this is also incredibly rich in nutrients. Cacao or guru or, you know, any of that stuff, okay? So we have peach palm, sacha inchi, and cacao. Three superfoods of the rainforest that you probably never heard of, might not be eating, um, but are things that I think would be really great to start producing in more quantities, especially because all three of these can be produced regeneratively and sustainably. You don't have to deforest to grow any of these things. They grow in the forest. That's the great thing about them, okay? Many things, but one of the things we're advocating for is the education and the knowledge about how to use cacao as a nutrient-dense food that you can, anyone can add to their diet and really benefit from all the selenium, the minerals, the phosphorus, you know, look great, everything that's in there. 
Uh, we have lots of savory dishes that you can add cacao to, chilies, soups, pasta sauces, etc. And that's just one example of how a tree crop, which also if you're growing the right varieties of cacao, if you're growing the heirloom varieties of cacao, doesn't need to be grown in a monoculture. It can be grown in an agroforestry setting, actually thrives in an agroforestry setting where it could be grown in tandem with things like peach palm and bread nut, highly, highly nutritious crops with protein, fats, because as, like I said, as we move into the sort of trending collapse uh, civilization, one thing that's really important to know is that every civilization that has collapsed has been sedentary and grain fed, which is what we are as the world, as a world, basically. We are a sedentary, grain fed uh, civilization founded on rice, potatoes, wheat, rye, cassava, plantain, and forgive me if I missed any, but I think those are like the main, main, main staple crops of the world, nine foods that make up 70% of our diets. This is a problem, uh, that there's not enough diversity in the food supply. Well, as I see it, as an agroforestry practitioner, someone who started, left urban life to start a regenerative farm, I'll show, take you guys outside and show you a bit of the farm, someone who you know, started here a regeneration project in Ecuador with my partner Juan, uh, it's really important to realize that with regeneration, it takes time. Why are we living on grains when we know, right, that there's an end to grains, when grains can only hold out for so long? No matter how much grain we produce, we're exhausting the soils, the soils are depleted of minerals, our grains are becoming less and less nutritious. Um, we are becoming more and more ill as an entire world civilization. What can we do? Well, we can begin to cultivate more forestry type farms that cultivate tree crops, highly nutritious tree crops. Not only are tree crops more nutrient dense than grains, they also yield more tons per hectare per year okay so this whole notion of do grains feed the world you know i mean wheat farmers in canada and kansas will swear up and down that you know it's their grains that are feeding the world but how well are those grains feeding the world first of all and are those grains really feeding the world or you know are those grains feeding cattle are those grains feeding animals that are then feeding like a very wealthy percentage of the world that can afford those things so transitioning from a grain fed society to a tree crop perennial polyculture fed society will take time. Tree crops, that is the big disadvantage with tree crops, cacao, peach palm, acorn, chestnut, Brazil nut, and everything that I've mentioned is that they take more time to produce. So we need to begin this transition now, okay? Agroforestry, needs to start now.